Hey, this is Overpass Insights. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about why you should use the Ionic framework and why I was wrong. All right, so a little over a year ago, I did a video called Why We Are No Longer Using the Ionic Framework. And in that video, I talked about how I'm a huge fan of Ionic. We have used it on a lot of projects in the past, but because of my fear of Apple rejections and even the possibility that Apple might start rejecting hybrid applications, I decided as a policy, we're not going to do Ionic apps anymore, right? We do hundreds of applications and it would be too much of a liability if for whatever reason, Apple decided to start rejecting hybrid applications, right? I'm not saying that they did it. I didn't say that they started doing it. It was just a fear of doing it. And that video did really, really well. For some reason, it ranked better than a lot of other Ionic videos. In fact, there was one point, if you typed Ionic Framework into YouTube, that video came up first, like ahead of all these tutorials, like thousands of tutorials done by developers who worked very hard on those tutorials. There's a video of me saying why we're no longer using the Ionic Framework, right? Even though I was saying really good things about it. And that video had like 145,000 views, which for this channel is a lot. And hundreds of comments. The comments were either of two camps. There were, yeah, Ionic sucks, which is not what I said. Or, Eric, you totally got this wrong. You, you're an idiot. Ionic is fantastic. Ionic doesn't suck. You suck. And <laughs> like the, worst, the worst comments I ever got, the most painful comments I ever got was from that video, right? So... Max Lynch, uh, the co-founder of Ionic, reached out to me a few times saying, Eric, that video is doing really well, but it's starting to hurt our brand, right? It's not based on any fact at all. It's based on some sort of fear, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And it's just not true, right? Some people who are on the fence and they're trying to do a bit of research into Ionic, they're finding that video first, and that may sway them from one way or to the other. So I told Max, I said, I don't really want to take down that video because those fears are still there. I mean, do you have any any way to say that you know that that I sh that those fears are unfounded? And sure enough, uh, Max and Ionic has sent through a bunch of statistics on Ionic, and I want to share those with you here. And also to share, so if you on the fence about Ionic, to let you know that maybe you should be using Ionic for your project, right? Um, and also I want to share with you a project that we have done in the past year where had we done it with Ionic, we would have been much better off, right? So let me share that with you. But first, let me just say this. If you're an app developer or thinking about doing an app or you're in any way involved in the app market and you have not subscribed to this channel, you might want to consider doing it. We talk about apps all the time and it's not so much my opinion or my experiences it's the comments and the community that we're growing here so even if you disagree with what we talk about on this channel it would be great to have you as part of the conversation even if i say something and you come in and say hey eric you're totally wrong i completely disagree with you you suck actually don't say the you suck part because really i think it's starting to eat me up inside so anyway, uh, I got this email from Andrew Hare, who is the uh, head of marketing at Ionic, and he, they basically they sent out a survey to 161, uh, and 161 people responded, and it's, it's re some really good information, and I, I have to admit, I'm probably completely wrong about my fears of Ionic in the past. So first of all, of the of the 161 people responded, 72% of them have submitted to the App Store. So we're not just talking about Android developers who say Apple sucks. No, we're talking about people who've actually submitted. And of those 72% uh, who've submitted to the App Store, or of all those 161, about 36% of them have been rejected, right? And if you've submitted to Apple before, you know that's like not uncommon. Apple rejects everything. In fact, if you're an app developer and you have submitted to Apple on multiple occasions and you've never been rejected, put it in the comments and then that way we can all call you Apple's pet. Right, so of those, 36% um, had been rejected, but all of, of those, 59 out of 161 that did have rejections, all but two of them have been 
have been approved. So just resubmitting it, make some changes to the metadata or whatever. And here's a, a really good graph they put together of the most common issues for rejections. And they have to do with um, incomplete information in the app, inaccurate description of the app, so metadata issues, or crashes and bugs in the application, which you get in native applications too. So, and of those, and of those two that were not approved, one of them had to do, was a Google Play one, so nothing to do with Apple to begin with. And another one had to do with somebody saying that Apple suggested he released it as a hybrid app, which, uh, which uh, Andrew goes on to say, I, don't, I can't see how that's true unless it actually looked like a web application. And that's one of the dangers of hybrid apps. If you're not, if you're not doing it well and you just make it look like a website, then of course they're going to reject it. So really good. And there's also uh, some ideas of where these rumors started from. There was a forum a couple years ago where uh, Nico Roberts put something in there saying that his app was rejected because it was a hybrid app. And that started this snowballing effect. And to be honest with you, I haven't helped the cause at all. So, uh, so that's it. So everything I've said about Ionic in the past is probably false. As much as it pains me to remove such a popular video from this channel, oh, I am going to remove that video from the, I'm gonna make it unlisted so it doesn't show up in the, in the listings anymore. So anybody making that decision about Ionic is not swayed in that way at all in the beginning. Now, as, as for a project that if we had done it in Ionic, it would have been better off. There was a project we did last year for a client and it wasn't, it wasn't cheap. It was, uh, it was pretty expensive and we went native on this one. We went native for Android and iPhone. We had two separate code bases and we submitted it to, to Apple it was rejected and it was rejected for the worst reason at all. If you've been rejected before, you know there's, there's rejections and there's rejections, but it was rejected on the content, on the, on the idea of the application as it was. So we've been through the terms and conditions, we read through the policies, and to this day, I still think it, it was unfairly judged on that because it was very vague language, right? So our only recourse there was to rewrite it as a progressive web app. And had we done it in Ionic, we would have been fine because we would have had all the code already and it would have been simple to rewrite it. So we spent, as we spent another couple months redoing it as a progressive web application so we could resubmit it again and you know we would have been better off if we went to Ionic. So the, the main purpose of this video is first of all to reach out to the Ionic team and sorry if the video I did in the past is um, has damaged it in any way because it is, I mean, they're really smart people and they're doing a really good job. I still have, I mean, to be honest with you, dependency hell, every time I use a different NPM install, I got something else, that kind of stuff really gets to me. That's one of the things I don't like about hybrids, but I know you have no control over that. Uh, and, um, I, and apparently of on the App Store, 21,000 apps have been submitted to the App Store in the past few years, which is twice as many as React Native so there's those two camps. So please let us know in the comments what your opinion. If you're an, an Ionic developer and you love it, and tell us why in the comments. If you hate Ionic, so this is it. I am not an Ionic. I mean, I'm not here to promote Ionic. I'm just here to say what I said in the past was wrong. But I am an Ionic fan. So, but if you dislike Ionic, put it in the comments why. If you don't use it, put it in the comments why. And hopefully, it'd be something other than the native is better. But you could put that there too. So anyway, thanks very much to uh, to Max and Andrew from the Ionic team for sending that through. I really appreciate it. Sorry if I've caused you any trouble in the past. And that's it for today. I'll talk to you again next time.